Hey, okay, so we're going to build the Zeptocore DIY kit today. So you should have a bag with all the materials, but you'll also need a soldering iron, solder wire, electrical tape, wire strippers, wire cutter, and optionally you can use some Gorilla epoxy at the end. So first thing you need to do is unwrap the Zeptocore board and then use some wire cutters or pliers to pull off the edges. Now you're going to want to get some tape and cut the tape into two tiny strips, about six millimeter by 11 millimeter each. And these strips will go right atop the headphone jacks. And this is just to prevent any spurious electrical connections. Next, you're going to want to get the black female headers from the bag and straighten out any of the legs that may have gotten unstraight in the bag and go ahead and slot those in and then turn it over. And now we're going to solder them in. It's easiest to solder one joint from each first before you solder all 20 of each side. So go ahead and solder one of each and then you can turn and solder all of them at once. Okay, once that's done, you can grab the yellow male headers from inside the bag with the chip. And you can place those right into the female headers and throw away the rest. Then the Pico chip can go right on top of those headers. Just make sure it's fully inserted. And again, here it's best to solder one from each side to make sure it's level. And go ahead and press the solder iron down pretty firmly to make sure it's flush. Okay, and now just go ahead and solder all 20 on either side. Once that's done, you can remove the chip and we're gonna move on to the speaker. The speaker is also in the bag. The speaker wires are a little bit long, so you'll need to trim them. Trim them to about 40 millimeters and then use wire strippers or wire cutters to cut off the ends. It's about 28 gauge wire. You only want to fill a few millimeters at the end and it's easiest now to tin those ends so they're easy to slot through the holes. Now you can insert the speaker wire from the top into the two holes, orientation doesn't matter here, and then solder on the back. Now go ahead and trim the speaker wires. And again, we're going to cut some electrical tape here to put on the back of the speaker so that its metal end doesn't make any spurious electrical connections. The speaker will just situate in between the two female headers in the middle of the board. All right, now we're going to grab the three potentiometers, check the legs that they're aligned. They may have gotten bent in transit and go ahead and put all three in at the same time. Now here you kind of want to make sure that they're aligned before you start soldering and solder just one leg at a time here. Check to see if it's still aligned move them if necessary, and then go ahead and solder the rest of the legs of all of the potentiometers. This will help keep them aligned. Now we can trim off the wings with some wire cutters. 
point away from yourself so they don't fly these metal shards fly into your eye or anything and you can kind of clean up with a little bit of solder to make it smoother if you want now get the battery holder from the bag and we want to trim the ends here to about five millimeters long Put the battery pack into the holes labeled VIN and ground, and then solder both of them one at a time, pressing against the battery pack to make sure it sits firm, and make sure not to make any other connections while you're soldering. Now you can place a speaker in the middle and place the chip on top of everything. Get the three toppers and go ahead and align them before pressing them in. Make sure the potentiometers are fully counterclockwise and then align the toppers so that they are as well and then press them in. Now this part is optional. You can take some Gorilla epoxy glue and then put a little dab inside the battery holder and one or, the, or two or the three holes and then use a toothpick to kind of circle it around and then rubber bands to hold it together. This will help keep the battery pack from moving anymore. Now wait about 24 hours if you've done the if you've done the glue. If you haven't done the glue, you don't need to wait 24 hours. Glue should be dry now if you glued it. And you can go ahead and insert the SD card, which is preloaded with samples, and add the batteries. And now we're gonna to have to upload the firmware. So go to the website zeptocore.com and scroll down, you'll see a link to the firmware. Go ahead and click that and it will download the latest firmware. Now insert a USB-C cable, hold the boot button and then press the reset button while the boot button is being held. A new drive will pop up in your computer. Copy the UF2 file that you downloaded and paste it into the new drive. The new drive will then disappear and you'll see that the Zeptocore boots up. Now you're good to go. You can unplug the USB-C cable and now you can use the on switch on the top right to turn it on and off. I'll talk more about this later, but just to get you started, you can go to the tool, the sample tool, and you can drop in audio there to make your own samples. And here you can drag and drop any audio. You can make splice markers. You can say the number of splices, how evenly they are. You can create them from transients. You can add different samples to different banks. And when you're all done, you just click download and then the zip file will be downloaded. You extract it. And then the extracted folder will have several folders in it. Plug in your SD card. And when it pops up, you can copy those several folders into the SD card, deleting the old ones. And if you eject that and put that into the Zeptocore, you'll be good to go.